Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. I'm on the Series S and I'm trying to use my Velocity 1. I'm using the Xbox controller to move around externally like this and jumping into the cockpit. Let's in the cockpit here. Let's use my Velocity 1 flight. I'm moving my yoke. Nothing's happening. Move my throttle here. Nothing's happening. No buttons are working. That's because if we go to control options, for many of us, after Sim Update 10, on our Velocity 1 flight, we have nothing assigned. All we have is a default profile. All our other profiles were lost for a lot of us, not for everybody, apparently. And under default, nothing's assigned. Now, apparently, a full reinstall of Flight Simulator will fix this. I'm not going to go through that. And it's a chance for me to set up my Velocity 1 from scratch, which I kind of enjoy doing to some extent. So if you're in the same situation or you're looking for a video about the sort of uh, setup, default setups, many of them, for the Velocity 1 Flight Yoke system, Look no further, we'll be doing that in this video. So let's not dilly-dally. Let's get on with this video. Okay, so let's start us off on our primary flight controls. So let's go to options, control options. And under velocity one here, make sure you have that selected. As you can see, nothing's assigned. Let's just move the filter to all. And flight control services, primary flight control services. So we want our elevator axis here, just the elevator axis. That will be your pushing forward and pulling back on your yoke click into it and we can go start scanning and just pull your or push your yoke i'm going to push it forward there you go axis free validate oh and I'm, once you do that you're going to have to rename your flight profile i'm going to call it velocity one profile no it's going to write over isn't it never mind velocity one light and space. I'm going to just call it, let's use capitals here, GA, the general aircraft, or general aviation aircraft, rather, as that's what I'm setting it up for in this video. So there you go. Throttle axis is assigned. Let me just see, with the elevator axis, you don't want to reverse the axis. Actually, let's apply and save that and go back and go back in the sim, jump in the cockpit. If I push my yoke forward, it's actually pushing, going back. As you, as you can see, if I pull it back, it's going forward. So we don't want that axis reversed. We actually want to untick it. And I'll just put this back on to all, filter all. Flight control services. Primary flight control services. So we'll untick that reverse axis. And there we go. And then we want a a aileron axis now. Just aileron axis. So you're banking left and right. S go into start scanning. Move your yoke left or right. I'll move it left. And validate. And apply and save. And we can go back. There you go. If I move my yoke left and right. We'll set up sensitivities later, by the way. Move it left or right. That's all fine. Putting it backwards and forwards. That's working as should be. Let's continue. Let's go to control service, uh, control options rather. Put your filter back to all. Just use your right analog stick if you're unsure. Flight control services. Control trimming services. We want our trim wheel set up. Now with the Xbox Velocity one just comes under one box. It's different on PC. Keep that in mind if you're trying to set this up on PC. And we want our elevator trim axis here. Let me just make sure I've got the right one. Toggle. 
elevator trim axis. Well, that's that'll be it. Minus 100 to 100 there. And we just want that. Click in the box there. Click and start scanning and move your trim wheel. That's axis 11. Keep that in mind. Validate. Let me just make sure now. Do I want this? I do not want this reversed either. So click off the reverse axis there. Apply and save. Like I said, we'll set up sensitivities later. Oh, just keep an eye on the trim wheel. Let me just get my pointer. I do have a mouse task. Trim wheel there. Just keep an eye on it. If I move my trim wheel down, it's moving down. If I move it up, it's moving up. So that's working all fine. Let's continue. Control options. Let's set up some flaps, shall we? Um, we'll just move the filter to all again. Flight control services. Secondary control services. And flaps. Now, what you want to hear is increase flaps and decrease flaps. I'm going to show you where I'm going to put mine. I'm going to put it on my hat one switch. That's where I like my flaps. You can put it on one of the uh, levers if you want on your throttle quadrant. I just prefer it on the hat one. So increase flaps. I'm going to move my hat one down. Start scanning. Move hat one down. That's going to increase my flaps. Validate. And apply and save. And we want to decrease flaps, of course. Decrease flaps. Go into start scanning. Move my hat one up in this case. And validate. And apply and save. So that will be flaps working. I can show you that in a second. Whilst we're here, I do want some rudders set up as well. That's in primary flight control. That's your primary flight controls rudders. And you want your rudder axis. I'm going to use the old triggers on the Velocity 1 flight. I'll show you a picture there to the right. Just going to click in the box. And you can just press start scanning. Press one of your triggers. And validate. And apply and save. Let's go and check these. We're back in the cockpit here. Let's remove the yoke. If I move my rudder left there. Yep. Or left trigger. My left rudder is kicking in, and uh, right, right rudder is kicking in. Going to have to use the Xbox controller for now just to get outside. And if I move my flaps down, flaps extend to one stage, two stage, and on the velocity one flight on my SIP panel, because I've got the latest uh, SIP update, of course. Link to the video I did of that. I can see the flaps light come up on the SIP panel. So I can see that's all working fine. Um, flaps fully up. So that's all fine. That's our flight control services set up. Let's continue. Okay, so let's set up now some power for the aircraft throttle. And in the, in the Cessna 172. Oh, I don't want that. Let's go back. In the Cessna 172, of course, you've got a, a throttle and mixture. We don't have prop, but you just followed the same principles I'm going to show you here. So control options. Make sure your filter is on all. Right, analog stick, remember. Go to power management. And we'll go down to throttle. And just click on that menu. And we're looking for throttle axis. Axis, <laughs> rather. Throttle axis one. Uh, throttle axis one, just throttle one axis rather. Click in the box, click and start scanning. Move your throttle. I'm going to use a GA throttle push pull levers in my case, just going to pull it. There we go, and validate. And on this one again, now let's just see throttle on this one again. Where is it? Throttle axis. We don't want to reverse the axis. So apply and save. Go back. We'll just test that in the sim. There we go. Push it full forward. Push it full back. That's all working just fine. Let's set up our... Oh, mix mixture. So control options. And if you want to set up your prop, you just set up the same principles what I'm doing here. 
So power management. Mixture. And we're just looking for mixture one here. Mixture one axis. And it'll be not to 100, I believe. So mixture one, click in the box there. Click and start scanning. Move your mixture lever. Or, yeah, whichever lever you want there. I'm going to use the push-pull GA levers again. Validate. And apply and save. Oh, no, no. Hang on a second. I don't want that axis reversed. Just make sure with these power levers that you're not reversing the axis. Otherwise, it will work backwards. Apply and save. Go back. Resume. I the engine's cut out because, yeah. But there we go. You can see the mixture's working well as well. Keep that full in. Let's just... Now, there we go. That's fine. Yep, that's all fine. So those are the levers set up. Mixture and throttle. Let's continue. Let's set up oops, some brakes. I'll fix that in a moment. So that's green. <laughs> So let's just go to filter all brakes. Now I've got my own place that I like my parking brake and I'll show you a, a picture on screen. It's on the power bank and buttons on the throttle quadrant there. So I'll go parking brake. Just going to click into that and click the button I want to set. And validate. And apply and save. And the only other thing I want to do in brakes is just set up brakes so when I'm coming into land I can brake and stop the aircraft. I'll show you where I want that. It's on my left handle on my yoke. So click and start scanning. Click the button I want. It's up to you where you want to put this. That's why I prefer it. Validate and apply and save. Go back. We can test that. Let's just move the view down. There we go. Click the parking brake button. Parking brakes off. As you can see, click my brake button. Well, nothing's going to happen because I'm not moving. But I'm going to assume that's work. We're going to test all this later. Let's continue with more settings. Okay, at this point, I want to set up some sensitivities. We've got a lot of our main flight control set up. So we'll go to control options. Make sure your velocity one flight is selected at the top there. Go to sensitivity. Just move your yoke backwards and forwards it's axis free for the pitch now let me just see elevator i like this it's different from the pc i've noticed i was going to use my pc settings the yoke behaves differently on the xbox i've noticed it's a bit more sensitive so i'm just going to put them both to minus 25 it depends where you want to put them they this just suits me minus 25 in the pitch axis and both the plus and minus sensitivities Banking, left and right. Axis 4, that's quite easy. Ailerons, I like these on the Velocity 1 on the Xbox at minus 30 in the plus and minus axis, or minus and plus axis. As you can see there. Or sensitivities, rather. Minus and plus sensitivities. So there you go, minus 30 in them. Rudders, just going to press my rudder triggers. There they are, axis 2. Rudders, minus 24. In both the minus and plus sensitivities. Oops, not 34. Do apologize, apologize if you can hear that above me. Somebody's possibly cleaning. There you go, minus 24. And if you remember before, the trim axis is axis 11. To get to axis 11, just move my trim wheel. Yeah, I can see that dot moving. Now with trim... I like that as minus 26 on the velocity one on the Xbox. That suits me. So the trim wheel just feels just right actually for me with minus 26. And there we go. That's for the trim wheel. Just pause it there. So axis 11 is for the trim. Minus 26 in the minus and plus sensitivities. Move it up and move it right to the top for you. So you can I'll pause it there for you for a second. So you can copy them if you want for the other axis. Rudders, elevator, and pitch. Rudders, elevator, and ailerons, rather. <laughs> so you can copy them down. And there you go. Apply and save. Go back. 
just give them... Oh, let's get this yoke visibility back on. Move that. Just going to move it. Yeah, I mean, I'll do a test flight later. That just feels right in the air. Okay, so with the sensitivity set up, let's now go to our autopilot settings. Okay, so let's set up some autopilot buttons. Now this is completely by preference where you would like them. It's interesting, autopilot's already open. I'm on filter all. Go to your autopilot menu. And we're looking first for toggle autopilot master. There we go, toggle autopilot master. I'll show you where I want it on the banker buttons on the throttle quadrant. Click in there, click and start scanning. Press the button I want. And validate. And apply and save. Just pressing the Y button there, by the way, in case you're wondering. And now we want autopilot nav one hold. This will effectively let you follow your course if you have a route set up. So autopilot nav one hold. I'll show you where I want this. So it's effectively replacing pressing the nav button. Press start scanning. Press the button I want. And validate. And apply and save. The only other autopilot control I'm going to set up is heading hold. You can do a whole lot. You can go wild with this. I'll link a video I did a while ago in the top right there of setting up many autopilot different buttons. Just going to keep it simple for this video because these are the ones that I normally use. So autopilot heading hold on. Click in the box there. Show you where I want it, of course. Click and start scanning. And press that button and apply and still well, validate and apply and save let's just go back go back to the sim i'm zoomed in i've got a simple flight route set up from london city to heathrow click the autopilot master autopilot's on click nav one hold should switch to gps it does click on heading hold and it will switch to heading switch back to gps to stop that yoke going crazy and I can turn autopilot back off. I'll show you this up in the air later. Let's continue now. Let's go on to the views, setting up our hat switch for views, which I'm sure many of you will be interested in. Okay, quickly before I go to views, I just want to set up some more autopilot buttons. This won't take a minute. This will effectively let you move your uh, heading knob, basically, or heading select. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Go to Filter All. And you want to go to Instruments and Systems. And I believe it's Flight Instruments. Let me just make sure. I believe it is. And you want to increase and decrease the heading bug. So just scroll right down. Increase heading bug. There we go. I'm going to show you where I want this. I want this on my hat too. Uh, right. So click in the box there. Click and start scanning. Move my hat to right and validate. And I want, if that was increase, I want decrease heading. Went way past it. Decrease heading bug. There we go. I'm going to use my hat switch again. Left. Click in the box there. Click and start scanning. Move it left and validate. And apply and save. And just go back. Resume. Now, I'm going to move my hat switch left and right. Look at that blue. Look at my primary flight controls, that first sort of uh, glass cockpit display. You can see that blue bug moving left and right. So, increases it, move it, moves it right. Decreases it, moves it, moves it left. I'll sync it up to my current heading. Uh, that's right. 272. So, that's that done. that done. Now, let's go on to the views. Okay, so let's set up some views, shall we, for our Velocity 1, as we don't have any at the moment. Control options. Filter to all, as always, when we're setting up new controls. Camera. And I don't remember which pip pov was uh, quick look and which one was looking around freely. But I'm going to set up my left, I'm sorry, my right, so pov 2, as quick look. This should be straightforward. So you just want to 
scroll down on the cockpit camera. Let me just go back to the top there. I want to do this rather quickly as I've showed this in many other videos, but slow enough that you can follow, hopefully. So let's just go cockpit quick view we're looking for. There we go. We want cockpit quick view right. Click in the box. Click and start scanning. I'm going to use my POV to right. And validate. And apply and save. Just grabbing my notes, bear with me. And we want quick view left. So you just got to keep scrolling way down so you see cockpit quick views left. Click in the box, click my POV to left, validate, and apply and save. Now for POV up and down, we want previous and next pilot. So POV up, we want uh, next pilot view. So let's see the next pilot position rather. Is that right? Next pilot position. It is indeed. So next pilot position, click in the box there. Click and start scanning, move my POV to up, and validate. I'll show you this in a moment in the sim. And we want previous pilot position, POV to down. Click in the box, click and start scanning, click POV to down, and validate. And apply and save. Just close that menu for a moment. We now want to go... Because I want to look at my instruments as well using my POV2 again. So I'm just going to click into that. And we want basically uh, next instrument view and previous instrument view. Oh. oh. No, it's gone back to copper. I do apologize. When that opens, it opens the... This is something that you may have to attend with yourself. Once you open instrument views, cockpit camera will open again for whatever reason. So next pilot instru instrument view, rather, I'm going to use my POV2 again. Don't worry, I've set it up for left and right, but it will still work when you're in the instruments. I'll show you this in a moment. Click and start scanning. Move my POV2 right. And as you can see, it's, it's already assigned to cockpit quick view right. Don't worry, that won't affect it. Validate. Let's just get down to that again. And it's gone back again. You may have to contend with this. It will keep the cockpit camera menu open, even though we close it. We want instrument views. Thank you. Ah, makes it all the more complex. I do apologize for that. But for previous instrument view, click in that. Click and start scanning. Move my POV to left. And don't worry, quick view left, but it won't affect it when you're in your instruments. Apply and save. Let's go back and show you this in the sim. So if I move my POV2 up, it will take me over the nose of copy. Let me just reset my cockpit view there. If I move it left and right, quick views left and right, which is the way I like it. So I can quickly look left and right. Up over the nose. If I press it down, it will go to my instruments. Left and right will cycle between my instruments now, which is quite useful. That's the way I like it, so I can quickly get to my G1000s. Okay, let's continue with these views. Okay, so let's continue. Let's set up our free look camera now, shall we? Free view camera. Again, it's in the camera. I'm going to use my POV1 for this. Cockpit camera. Oh, you want to go to filter all, of course. So you can see all the settings that you can assign. And I'm just going to set up some simple ones. I'll link a video I did about setting up uh, free look in the cockpit. I'm just going to set up some simple views here just so <laughs> the videos are not too long. It's already getting quite long. Cockpit look. Uh, cockpit. Let's just see. Look up. I'm going to use my POV1 for this. Click in the box there. Click and start scanning. Move my POV1 up. And validate. And apply and save. And this will get you by. So again, we'll just scroll down to we'll see that assignment we just set. Oh, da, da, da. it's taking its time, isn't it? There we go. Quick view. Da, da, da. Okay. And cockpit, cockpit look. We just want cockpit look up. Look, cockpit look right. That'll do. Click in the box there. Click and start scanning. And move your POV1 right. Or POV2, depending where you want your free view to be. 
You can just reverse what I've done there if you want them if you want your free view on POV2 and quick views on POV1. I just prefer it this way, it's the way I normally have it. So copy it, look up, copy it, look right, copy it, look left, click in a box, start scanning, use my POV1 left, and validate. And then we just want down, and that's all I'm going to set up. You can do look up right, look up left. I'm not going to go through all that because it works fine, actually, just like this. And we just want cockpit look down. Now, where is that? Cockpit. So we've got, oh, that's quick view. Never mind. Cockpit look down. There we are. Click in the box there. Click in start scanning. And move your POV1 down. And validate just to make life easier for myself here. I'm going to set up a, apply and save that. I'm going to set up a button to reset the cockpit view. Just to make my life easier. I think it's right at the bottom of in cockpit camera uh it's not is it maybe it's right at the top there we go doing this on the fly reset cockpit view have i made yep cockpit camera so you see in my there you go Cop reset cockpit view i'm going to show you the button i want set up for that you can choose whichever button you prefer click in the box click and start scanning start scanning and click that button and validate and apply and save and go back and let's test all this so pov one there you go i can move around the cockpit quite freely reset my view no problems use my pov two or pull the nose of the aircraft down into my instruments oops cycle between the instruments no problem get back up pov one to look around freely reset camera view so there you go that's all the controls that i want to set up for the velocity one that's all the ones i need in an aircraft such as this if you want to add more i showed you the principles of setting up controls let's let's now test all these settings and go for a quick test flight now then i jumped the gun a bit we've not set up any external views sure many of you want that so we need to do that i'll rectify that let's go to filter all and let's just see under camera oops and it's under let's just see camera mode switches here click on that I want to set up a button to, to toggle cockpit and external mode i'll show you where i'm going to put it on my system click in the box there click and start scanning press that button Validate, apply and save. I just quickly want to test that. Yep, that all works fine. Oops, more people flying through me, never mind. <laughs> Thankfully they can fly through you and I'm not obstructing people. Go to camera and we want, let's just see, filter to all first. Not following my own advice there. External camera. I want to set up some free views or free movements outside in the external camera. So I just want uh, external view look down. I'm going to use my POV1 again for this. And don't worry, it won't conflict with your cockpit settings if you're in external mode. Click on start scanning, move my POV1 down. Uh, validate. And you can see it's already in cockpit look down at a sign, but it's not going to... Uh, mess up it's not gonna it's not gonna affect it when you're in external mode uh cockpit external view look left click on that click on start scanning move my pov one left apply and save or validate and then apply and save let's just see cockpit external view Look up, external view look up. Click in the box, click and start scanning, move my POV1 up. Depends if you want it on POV1 or POV2, just reverse what I'm doing here. So if you want it on POV2, you can put it there instead. And external view look right. Click in the box, click and start scanning, move my POV2 right, POV1 right. Validate and apply and save. Let's just go back and test these. Oh. Bring out my throttle. Go to external mode. Move my POV1 around. As you can see, I can look around freely in external mode doing that. Okay, you know, chaps, let's just go straight forward. I did say let's go for a test flight. Let's do it. Let's stop hogging the runway. 
Release the parking brake, throttle up. I'm using the triggers. They feel fine with the sensitivity settings that I set up. Do have a route set up, I believe. I do. Just a quick route. Quick and dirty to London Heathrow. Pull back. Pitch feels fine. Use my trim wheel just to keep myself in a positive rate of climb. I'll just fly it manually for the moment. I want to come away from our heading, as you can see on the right G1000 here. I just want to come away from that for a moment because I want to use heading mode to get back onto our heading. So as I'm doing that, I'm moving my banking left and right with the sensitivities I've set up. It feels slightly resistive. Slight resistant in there. Which is the way I would expect the Cessna to feel when I'm moving left or right. And when I'm pitching it feels fine and the trim wheel feels lovely as always. Let's just pop down, turn autopilot on. I'm going to put it into heading mode first. Let's just make sure, use my button assignments to move my heading bug around. And there we go, we can fly that way. And I'm going to press, bring you down, nav one hold. GPS is in white because we're too far away from that magenta line. So I'm going to use my heading bug, move it to the left. And before you know it, that GPS will go green because we'll be on our magenta line. So move slightly more to the left there, bank slightly more to the left rather. Just to intercept that magenta line. Come down, set an autopilot. I've not set this up on the velocity one. Oh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter for now. Let's just fly back. Do I have my mouse active? Just about. So I can just set a simple and quick and dirty heading. Uh, altitude, rather. And just bring our altitude down. Keep an eye on that GPS going green any second now. And vertical speed. Oh, it's awkward, this mouse. There we go, set it down. Get us back to a reasonable altitude. But there you go, GPS has gone green. So we're locked onto our course now towards Heathrow Airport. Well, listen, chaps, those are my settings. If you're having trouble setting up your Velocity 1, those are my settings for a GA aircraft like the Cessna 172, 152. You can adopt them for other aircraft, but it should get you up and running. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Stick it in your favourite bars for future reference. You never know what's going to happen with Flight Sim and the Velocity 1 in the future. Subscribe for more videos, and I'll be seeing you soon.